What is up, my Squirrelites? It is I, your king, welcoming you to another Let's Play. Holy crap, why am I starting another one? Well, <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you guys, this ain't even the only one I've got left in the store. And oh my gosh, those graphics, man. Oh, so cutting edge. Holy crap. Let's play Star Wars Episode One: Racer, everybody. This is an absolute classic, and I love it. Okay, so this is a couple. We've got a couple failed attempts as far as files went because of recordings lost and whatnot. But here we are. We're gonna get started with this thing, and we're, I'm gonna show you one of the best, if not the best, racing game on the Nintendo 64. I know that's a crazy claim to make, but I'm gonna make that claim anyway. All right, so. Ooh, who do I use? Uh, I want to use every character at some point, so I think we're going to get this brat over with as fast as possible. So, before I go any further, Star Wars Episode 1 Racer is pretty simple, okay? So, you got what you got is you got uh, seven, well, you got three or er, three circuits, all on different levels of difficulty, seven races in each, and then you also have an invitational circuit that you get for completing each and every single one of these races. Uh, and there are four races in that. You get you unlock one for each of these circuits, and then a fourth one for beating those three races as well. So all in all, that puts it up to 25 courses, okay? Every single one of these, well, a lot of them take place on the same planets. You'll see repeats on the same planets. And they sometimes borrow elements from one another, but for the most part, each one of these races is unique. And they each have their own characters that are unique to them and are, well, track favorites like that. Um, most of the time, not all the time, this is an exception, and then every sing and then there are a couple races where the track favorites are characters we already have from the start. But in every other race, as soon as you win, the track favorite will become yours. Winner take all is the only way to play because that's going to get you the most uh, the most money, and honestly, you need it to you need it to upgrade the best. So here we go. And I got the boost to go somehow, and oh my gosh, Anakin is so annoying. So annoying in this game. Okay, so, oh uh, wait, I forgot. How do I change the, there we go. All right, I need to change the map somehow. Okay, this is what I like to keep it. This is my settings, all right. Zoomed all the way out, and then also this thing right here, which basically just tells you your progress on the, on, uh, on the map. So, uh, it's pretty darn simple how you race, okay? Just hold, that, hold A to go, obviously. Right on the C, right C button. Oh wow, not lap back. Uh, sorry, left C button. Uh, those will actually tilt yourself sideways. The reason I'm accidentally going back is because my C buttons are mapped to the analog, the right analog stick on the controller I'm using, because I am emulating this dark. Boom. Okay, so I'm off to an awesome start. So anyway, uh, yes, can't explode. That's bad. Uh, once, as soon as you get the green light to go on your speed meter, I don't know what I hit there. Um, as soon as you can get the green light to go, you can activate a boost, which you do by pressing forward on the analog stick, and the second it turns yellow, hit A again, and you will start your boost up. The meter is going to charge up, and the second the meter hits the top, you're going to overheat, which you'll need to repair yourself to fix, which you do by holding down the R button. Repairing also slows you down exponentially, which you'll also need to do if you take too much damage to your engines and whatnot as you go. Just saying. So it's it's... For the most part, it's actually pretty simple, but uh, it's also pretty darn intuitive and a lot of fun to play, I'm not going to deny. Uh, Z is how you're going to drift around corners and whatnot uh, if you need to do it. It's actually only very useful for ice levels because it actually counters a little bit uh, the sliding on the ice levels. Uh, you're supposed to flip sideways when going through that, but honestly, I don't need to because you can still fit through it just fine if you're accurate enough. But yeah, pretty simple. Pretty darn simple, and I'm glad I'm getting Anakin out of the way, because he is by and far the most annoying character in this game. Every single one of them has their own chatter. If you double tap R, they're also, they'll also make taunts. What is he even saying there? Like, faster than you. Like, I don't... He's like drunk or something. I don't know. You don't... I don't know. Maybe uh, maybe underage drinking is totally an acceptable thing in the Star Wars universe. I don't think they probably care, honestly. I mean, I, I, you know, I'm sure they don't. They don't have probably near the same health regulations, but they might. Who knows? Who knows? Oop! No, oh, there we go. Hey, I did it that time. 
Good. So I'm definitely going to win this first race. This one's pretty easy. This is actually just a shortened version of the final course in the final circuit, which is actually modeled after the race you see in Star Wars Episode One. Speaking of, most people, and I'm not entirely sure if I agree with them, but I definitely see where they're... Actually, no, I do agree. Most people like to say that this right here is the best thing to ever come out of the first ep first Star Wars episode. And I want to switch vehicles real quick. Uh, most people say that, yeah, this is the best thing to come out of Star Wars, uh, the first Star Wars movie. I sort of agree. I definitely like the first Star Wars movie more than most people do. I just don't give it as much crap. Just because I don't... I don't really think it's that... Yeah, there's bad elements to it, and there's but there's bad elements to every Star Wars movie. There's a lot of good elements to Star Wars Episode One. Heck, it has the best lightsaber fight in the entire franchise. So, I don't... I don't know. People are too harsh on the prequels, I, in my honest opinion. Like, way too harsh. Yeah, there's stupid elements to it. Jar Jar is a killer. But, honestly, I think people overreacted with him. Like, yeah, he's a little bit stupid. George Lucas shouldn't try to be funny we saw all saw that how that worked out in Howard the Duck but at the same time I don't I think I think people are just over just overreact with those movies people nerd rage too hard they need to calm down they really do oh well we're doing pretty good on this race this is actually the sh I believe the shortest course in the game so not that hard to succeed on um, just be very careful when you're boosting, because as soon as you boost, you're ba you basically, while you're boosting, your pod racer is a glass cannon. It's flying at a million miles an hour, and anything that touches it will ex make it explode. So, uh, just be wary of that. You only want to use your boost when you're in a very open area. And I kind of killed it on that one. Not gonna lie. That was, that was actually pretty darn good. I didn't get the boost at the beginning. But we did unlock our very first pod racer, which is actually a pretty darn good one. So I'm going to go switch over to that one. This Team Topaz. He didn't even win, too. It's very. It's actually very rare that the, that the track favorite doesn't win. Okay. Or doesn't get second, I mean. All right, let's select him. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to buy from the get-go... I'm going to buy all three pit droids. I didn't mean to inspect my vehicle. Oops. Uh, I mean, you can. You can look at things, but I didn't want to do that. I want to go buy parts real quick. Um, what can I afford? Uh, turning would be pretty nice. Let's get an upgrade on that. I uh, can't afford that top speed upgrade. How about an air brake? Uh, cooling would be nice. Repair upgrade. Good. All right, let's start this race. So yeah, this is a pretty darn simple game, but it's a lot of fun because of its simplicity. I value that in video games. I know I know a lot of people don't all the time, but I think that simplicity is actually a very important aspect to a good game. There's actually a lot of games I love for their simplicity. I know a big one that I'm a fan of is uh, a big example of this, and I know it's not necessarily... You know, it's not at all the same kind of game, but a good example of it, it would be the very first Animal Crossing, okay? I adore that Animal Crossing, and a lot of people are like, well, it's just worse than the new ones, it has less stuff. Well, yes, it does, but honestly, like, here's a, okay, here's another great example, and one that a lot of people can relate to. Y'all played Rocket League? Okay, Rocket League is the prime of example of simplicity being better and this is a very hard part not to crash in like very difficult part not to crash in like very very difficult <laughs> incredibly difficult not to crash there um rocket league is a game that a lot of people are a fan of well fun fact it is actually as far as being a sim uh it is far far more simplistic and far it has a lot less content than its predecessor which has a super long name that i can't remember and yet, Rocket League is the one that everybody knows about and is into, while its predecessor almost nobody has played or heard of. Like, you gotta understand, in certain cer situations, simplicity is important. Now, as far as racing games are, con are concerned, honestly, I wouldn't consider this actually that simplistic of a game compared to, let's say, Mario Kart. But, uh... It's, it, I, I would actually say it's more simplistic than Diddy Kong Racing. Oh, well, that was smart. Because uh, Diddy Kong Racing has uh, 
a little a few more extra elements to it with what with item stacking and the bananas and whatnot and stuff that I honestly when I was a kid didn't wrap my head around as easily but oh my gosh they're right on my tail jeez go in there I missed my I missed it dang it crap oh shut up I'm gonna catch up to you in just a second but yeah I don't know this game still has simplicity to it and I absolutely love it for that reason and I think that is an incredibly important element why didn't it let me boost incredibly important element for a video game to have some overcomplication is bad sometimes this is why I can't get into most RTS's that's why I can't get into most MOBAs like they're they're a little overcomplicated I'm gonna be honest with that like yeah it's a different story if it's something you're actually invested in but if there's a if there's a game that you just want to sit down and play just for the heck of it you don't want a bunch of stuff bogging up your time and your and your you know your focus and whatnot you just want to play it's all you really want to do and oh man I almost met, went between that dang it I'm gonna probably crash again squeeze through Whew. okay good we are good let's see if I can get can I get a boost to go here that would be super helpful thank you Golly, tilt back so you can make your land your jumps more softly. Sometimes it will prevent you from losing your boost. If you're good about it, but I wasn't able to do it there. So on this track, there's actually a fork in the road. I went up last time, but you can actually go down here in this cave. This is typically the slower and more dangerous route. Well, okay, not always slower, but it can be slower if you're not perfect at it. Uh, I typically like to just stay up top. I feel like it's a lot safer. This has got too many narrow spots, even though I did crash up there last time. Uh, but if you can make it out of here in one piece, it can be worth it. I actually gained a pretty good lead. Now I'm going to try not to miss this quote-unquote shortcut here. I totally did. No, you know what? I'm backing up. I'm backing up. I want to show this. I want to show this. If you are skilled, which I clearly am not, you can get into this, which is actually a very good spot because your speed picks up drastically here. And I mean... Look at, look at this. Look at, I am flying, even without my boost. Look at how fast I'm going. Now be careful, because you can very easily crash on your way out. But, make it a one piece, and oh, that's not what I meant to do. Golly, I've been crashing a lot in this race. Make it out in one piece, though, and it's actually, a, you can benefit from it quite a lot. I'm sucking for being one of the easiest characters to use. Like, this character right here is arguably one of the best in the game. He has... Very balanced stats and very good handling. So, if yeah, you know, I honestly I would not fault you if this is the only character you played through with um, the entire game. But I have made a pact where I am going to play every single character as we unlock them, which is going to break my heart a little bit because about halfway through the game we're going to unlock my favorite character and that's all I'm going to want to use, but I won't be able to. Maybe for some races I'll be able to get away with it, but for the most part, no. Okay. Doing good. Let's get a boost off, please. And he's actually got some pretty darn good uh, cooling. There we go. Nice, nice. He doesn't even overheat as quick as some of the others, which is which I really appreciate. All right, let's stay up top this time. It looks, and I think we got this in the bag for sure. Unless I crash like twice here somehow, which I don't, I don't think I will do. I might crash once like that because I'm awesome and stuff. But if I can keep this up and not do it again, and also get a boost to go here, I will have this one for sure. Boost to the finish. Boost to the finish. Oh, that's not going to work. Ugh. I'm losing control. Holy crap. That was a very bad race. Jeez, and we're just getting started with this thing. But I did unlock one of the best characters. And oh my gosh, he didn't get second that time. That's just so weird when that happens. I did unlock... Oh, I didn't mean to go to the junkyard. Oh, pff, I keep skipping over things. Okay. Change vehicle. Thank you. Okay. We did unlock one of the most optimal characters for any ice level. He has very good traction. Um, but this is not an ice level that we're about to do, so we are going to probably struggle a little bit. So here we go on the next planet, which is all underwater themed. And also this guy... Man, is he annoying. But uh, we got a pretty high top speed on this character that we're using right now. He's pretty slippery, though, on any normal surface. 
pretty darn slippery. Not somebody I would recommend using the whole game. He can be useful on the ice levels because he gets across the ice pretty easily. But in any other map, I would say, nope, pass on him, please. He is going to be a lot of fun to use in this race. Uh, oh, gosh. Yeah, I'm not really a fan of these courses right now. Ah, I don't know. They're, they're aesthetically pleasing, but they're kind of difficult. And there's one thing about these courses that I absolutely despise, and that's coming up right here. Oh, gosh. This thing you just got to take a chance with. I hate this. These stupid doors that open and close, and you never know when you're going to hit them, and it's almost impossible not to hit at least one of them on each lap. It's so annoying. So annoying. Oh, I absolutely hate it. Okay. Now, you're probably wondering, why aren't you using the mini-map? Well, the reason I don't use the mini-map is because the mini-map is pretty much useless because, well, you can't really see what's coming up ever before you get to it. There's... The, the standard zoom is pretty terrible, and then the only other option is to zoom in even further on the map, which is even more useless somehow. Oh! Whoa, whoa! What killed me there? Golly, that did a lot of damage really fast. Gosh. I just suck right now. Just be very steady on the trigger. Okay, we're getting into the last area. Let's boost a little bit. Alright, there we go. I'm going to try to break it a little bit because this guy is so slippery. Holy crap. As soon as I can finish this race, though, I'll end this episode. Gosh. So slippery. Come on. Get a boost. Get a boost. No, nope, That is into a wall. I thought I could turn out of the, out of the way. <laughs> Gosh. This guy. Definitely not using him again. Whew. No, thank you. All right. Nope. That wasn't going to work. Golly, this is not a very easy place to to get your boost to go either. It's just a not an optimal course for it. There's not a lot of open uh, straight straightaways that you can hit. Okay, that one I cannot explain. I cannot explain how I died there. That was just weird. Something's up. This guy probably just sucks, and the game feels the need to drive the point home that he sucks, so he kills me while I'm playing him for no reason. Because that was. I, I, I can't explain that. I really can't. I don't know what happened. I don't know what hitbox I ran into at that speed, but I have no idea. Okay, gosh, at least it just skips you past the doors if you blow up. That's why it's almost better to just go big or go home. You fly through them if you blow up, then it'll just spawn you in the end of it. And you don't have to worry about getting stuck. Okay, jumps, please don't kill me. Thank you. Oh, that's such a lovely sound. Ah! You know what? I'm just not going to boost. That'll be better for this. I'm just not going to boost. This is not working out in my favor whatsoever. This course is just bad for this. There we go. Just steady. Just easy driving. Easy driving. Oh, my gosh. Uh, he's so slippery. Hey. So down in the bottom left, if you couldn't tell, every single time I get hit, that starts to flash. That is basically the what tell, tells me how much damage each part of my engine has sustained. If I start to get, in, if, or if any section starts to get orange or red, I'm going to want to start to heal. If I have any more than that, it won't even allow me to heal. So like right now, I can heal. But make sure you can let the repair finish on its own. Uh, basically hold it down until it stops repairing. Otherwise, you might end up screwing yourself. So just be careful. Gosh, two minutes on that lap. No more boosting. There we go. And these track favorites are very good at not getting second place. Gotta say. And just to say that, he, he makes it into second place. Alright, please don't kill me for no reason. Thank you. That was a much more gentle landing than the last one, honestly. Almost there. Oh gosh. Oh gosh. Okay, we're not almost there. We're only we're not even halfway done with the lap. Easy. Oh, here we go. Go big or go home. Oh I'm dead. It works. Yep, nothing you can do about those doors. There's really no way to react, especially with a character this slippery. Uh, 
Oh my gosh, pull! His turning isn't even a bad stat, though. That's why I don't understand why he slips so much. His turning is actually one of his best stats. It doesn't make sense. It really doesn't. Right, here we go. Easy. Oh my gosh! Ow! Ow, 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 I'm surprised I only took that much damage. Easy. Right around these corners. Ugh, there you go. I'm actually going to use a boost here, just because. And then I'm going to hard break. Oh, there we go. That works. Repair a little bit. Good. Oh, by the way, while you repair whatever engine you are repairing, uh, it will be a little bit harder to turn with said engine as you go. Just a, just saying. But we did it! Frick. So that's three, uh, four races down. Not bad. But ladies and gentlemen, we're going to have to continue on in the next episode. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all so very much for watching this episode of Let's Play Star Wars Episode 1 Racer. I hope you all enjoyed it very much, and I will see you all in the next one.